happening. Is Jesus God? Is he the Son of God? Hopefully, in the next couple of minutes, I can clear some things up. Hi, I'm Fred Von Comico. You can call me VK. Thank you for joining me on the second of our Blue Ridge Bible Talks. Welcome to my backyard. We'll talk about the Bible and Christianity, usually filmed against the backdrop of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Today, we're at the very top of Mount Pisgah. It's a 750-foot mile and three-quarter hike from the trailhead. That's where we were last time. It's a steady incline on a winding, rocky, well-traveled path, and it's well worth the effort. Today's topic is another well-traveled path, and I've been on it countless times. <laughs> After coming to Christ, I heard about his deity within a few weeks. By the way, saying the deity of Christ or Jesus' deity is another way of saying that he's God. Well, there I was, a brand spanking new Christian, and my new brothers and sisters in Christ showed me verse after verse. It blew me away. The thought that Jesus was way more than just a merely human religious teacher gripped my heart and fueled my imagination. So I told some people. But I kept hearing, no, he's, he's not God. He's the Son of God. Well, he certainly is, but what does that mean? Is he the Son of God the same way that I am, and that all of us are sons and daughters of God? No, Jesus stands in a category all by himself. I'm sure you've heard of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. Now that's the King James Version. The words translated only begotten are better translated one of a kind, unique, especially when applied to Jesus. We have all had a physical mother and father. Jesus also had a physical mother, but that's where the comparison ends. God himself is his father a miracle performed by the Holy Spirit. You can read about that in Luke chapter 1. Jesus shares our humanity, and he shares the deity of his Father. Jesus is God in the flesh. The New Testament has a lot to say about this. Today I want to focus on the opening lines of Hebrews chapter 1. You might want to pause the video and go grab a Bible. We're in Hebrews chapter 1, beginning in the first verse. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Prophets, experiences, miracles, a burning bush, a flood, the giving of the law, countless acts of mercy and judgment. That's how God got his message across in the Old Testament era. Verse 2 announces a change. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he also made the universe. The Father created everything through his Son, and the Son is the rightful heir of it all. And it is how God now speaks to the planet. In the past, but now. But there's more. Verse 3, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. The father had impressed his character, his very nature, upon his son, and his son perfectly reflects the glory of God. Like father, like son. And by his power, he holds all of creation together. Can you see how all of this places Jesus in a unique position, far above anything else any human can claim? Could it get any better? Yes, it could. And it does. Look at the end of verse 3. 
after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. The writer doesn't say how Jesus purified sins. We'll deal with that on another video. But he does leave us with the astounding claim of Jesus taking his seat on God's throne. And throughout the Old Testament, the only one who ever is worthy to sit on that throne is God himself. In the next video, we're going to look a little bit closer on why Jesus sitting on this throne is such an astounding claim. Hope to see you then.